Hi, I'm Mike with Utastic. I'm here at SCNA again. I'm sitting down with Cully Smith, who has run a uh, user group on the University of Wisconsin uh, campus, and he had an interesting perspective uh, on the needs of a uh, of a student user group versus those of some of us who are out in the professional world, what we typically typically consider the attendees of a user group. So, uh, thanks for sitting down. What what was it that was unique about running a user group uh, for students than when you came out of college, yeah, coming into Mad Railers? What what was your experience? Yeah, so the the users group was geared toward not only uh, students but also professionals on mm -hmm. campus. Oh, so okay. in Madison, Wisconsin, we have Mad Railers, which is an established users group, mm -hmm. and it meets on Monday evenings. The first um, perspective that we were trying to offer as a Mad Railers group, as well as a lot of other users groups, mm -hmm. it's geared towards startup companies, towards enterprises, things like that. Right. But the uh, campus has specific needs. A lot of times they're dealing with um, not new products, but they're dealing with how to write software um, with existing things in place. Right. So trying to um, come in and change the culture to be more agile, to be more lean, mm -hmm. was simply not feasible, it was out of their control. Right. If you have a startup or a business, you might get some headway in doing that. Or if you have a small department. But quite often on campus, you didn't even have a department. You had one individual working on a code base. Right. So what we were trying to do was um, create a resource for the campus to use to say, these are some of the products that um, are being developed across the campus, right. and where are some ways that we can consolidate our efforts and to do some knowledge sharing? Because if right. someone else is building an application very similar in say the Department of Medicine mm -hmm. to something that someone else is doing in the Department of Communications and those people don't have a way to talk, right. a central location to meet, a lot of times there's going to be wasted efforts. Right. So instead of just having uh, a newsletter, it's like, hey, let's get everybody together casually, let's talk about this cool stuff and then let it naturally let them talk and get to know each other in a, in a less uh, controlled, less structured environment. Mm -hmm. so you're not in a meeting. You're, you're a user group. Yeah. yeah, we started off with just a mailing list. Okay. So we were using a mailing list and we found that there was there were some topics that just did not translate well to discussion in a mailing list. And we wanted, and people also wanted an opportunity to learn. They wanted to go in and see someone present on test-driven development, but not under the preconceived notion that it was going to be something that you were going to be able to implement, but just what are some of the ways that we can start doing test-driven development. Right. And also, on campus, even though this was a Ruby on Rails meetup group, we were opening it up to people that were from, coming from different backgrounds, from Java, from .NET, from other things. And so it was sort of language agnostic. Okay, so even though you were underneath the, the label of a Rails group, it was, hey, whoever's cool, whoever wants to come yeah. in and, and learn about these things, these concepts, um, not necessarily Rails, but concepts that are popular on Rails, mm -hmm. um, they were all welcome to come in. Yeah. So and Did you get some people like that, that? Quite a few people came in just that were doing JavaScript stuff. Okay. So on campuses, mobile is a very... Um, uh, big concern right now writing mm -hmm. things for mobile apps because students are walking around with phones, with, right. with tablets from class to class. And so you could either be doing iOS or Android or something for, for native apps, but a lot of people were um, building their apps and then just having like a JavaScript framework, like phone app or something right. like that, so that they could wrap it. So we had quite a few people that were interested in using test-driven development and agile approaches to the JavaScript side. So when you came out of college and you moved out and you were you moved on from the, uh, from, from sc the school university environment out into a uh, professional environment, well, I should say, were you, a, I should say, actually, were you a student at the university? I was actually an employee. Oh, you were an employee, yes. okay. And you were, but you were trying to reach out to your students? Or? We had students, um, and we were trying to expose students because that was one of the things that we had, had learned that a lot of students that were going through a traditional computer science program weren't exposed to things like test driven development, like agile, mm -hmm. and things like that. They were learning data structures, they were learning things like that, but they weren't understanding how. Uh, that was going to be implemented. Right. And the Madison community has a number of startup companies. They have um, Bendyworks, which is a software right. consulting shop, and um, a number of other software consulting co or software startup companies that were wanting to hire people, but there was a huge gap between what the students were actually learning at school and how they were going to be yeah. asked to practice it. So yeah, we did reach out to students 
just to say, well, this is what pair programming is. This is what agile is. This is what test driven development. Yeah, they're is. learning. They're learning, learning data structures and schema and root and Java, mm -hmm. and then coming out and having to figure out how to write up an application. Yeah, you know, it's a big gap. Yeah. So, but when you came out of of working in the university environments into the more um, Traditional business startup culture. What what kind of became of the user group on the campus? It, we needed someone to come in and, and take over and support it. I think that there are still efforts to get it going, but the problem I think is if you don't have someone that you know has the vision to get it done, it, right. it, it's so it's still sitting there. And at this time, it, it's made mainly just a practical matter. I don't have the same permissions to book rooms. On campus, so even though I still would have a great interest in doing so, I would need someone on campus. So it's it's more of a uh, bureaucracy and red yeah. tape kind of holding you back. Yeah. So okay. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to sit down. Yeah, Appreciate thank it. You.